going to be covering some, some very important things that the prophets went through to prepare us as the future prophets of, of the Most High today. What does that curtail? What does that go through? You know, what did the prophets have to go through? Will we have to go through some, some things? Of course we will. But we're going to get into it. We're going to get it. So as, as always, you know, I give all praises to the Most High, Ahayim, Esher Ahayim, Ahasher Mishai, Yawak and Deshwak. Let's go ahead and get into the lesson. The trials of the prophets. The Elder's Commentary says, there are many that enter the truth and have no real understanding of what they will need to do to become strong within it. We exist in a time in which all the prophets of the past long to be a part of it. And yet we sometimes find ourselves making light of this reality when really it's a blessing that we're here today witnessing the end of this wicked system and Christ's kingdom coming in. The awakening of our people, how we're coming back to the law, statutes, and commandments, all of that. It is time, or shall I say, it is the time of our deliverance from the forces of darkness and the coming of Yeshia. With that time comes great sacrifice, great sacrifice, and great tribulation on those who choose to stand for truth. Being the scriptures are written for our learning, and faith comes by hearing the word of the Most High. Let's look at some of the trials of the past so that we can remain charged with faith. The faith which is required to oppose the devil in the times ahead where the whole world will turn to him and look to destroy the righteous. That time, that time is approaching. It's coming upon us. Like I said, we'll post the scriptures above our heads or somewhere in this vicinity of the video so people on YouTube can watch and turn to the scriptures as well. Our first Bible scripture is Romans chapter 5, 1 through 5. Romans chapter 5, 1 through 5. That's Romans chapter 5, 1 through 5. Romans chapter 5, 1 through 5, the bar. Let's yeah. go ahead and read that. Yeah. This is the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Ahia through our Lord Yeshua Christ. Verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of Ahia. So I want to stop right there to show that because of our faith and by by hearing the word and doing the word, not just being hearers only, by doing the word, that gives you access to grace and not anything outside of that. You don't get grace for just being wicked. You get grace when you are lawful. Following the law, statutes, and commandments. Read. Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Correct, read. And patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of Ahia is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. So the first thing to remember, brothers and sisters, when it comes to the tribulations, we make face for this truth is that it is there to make you stronger in patience. All right, which is something that we all need. We all need to increase our patience, not just with one another, but patience with yourself and patience when it comes to spreading this gospel. Patience. 
Patience is, is, is very key in this, right? So the more challenging a scenario you go through, the less challenging other things in life become if you are wise enough to learn from them. You only get that through patience. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4 now, 11 through 16. 1 Peter chapter 4, 11 through 16. So right off the rip, the elders is building up a foundation of what it means to be what? Prophet. And the trials that a prophet will go through. The trials of the prophets. 1 Peter 4, 11 through 16. The bar. <clears throat> Come. This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Mm -hmm. If any man speak. Now, if any man speak. Let him speak as the oracles of a higher. Let you speak as that. Let you speak as the oracles of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, the, the words of the Bible. Let you speak like that. And not anything else outside of that. Read. <clears throat> If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which a higher given. See, this is a this is a ment mentality thing. All right, this this is something you have to work on. You have to put this on, putting on put, like putting on the whole armor of Christ. This this is the mentality state of a prophet. Right? Read that in a higher. In all things may be glorified through Yeshua Christ. And that's what's important. Come on, read. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Come on. Verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Don't think it's strange. Don't think that this is some weird thing that's just happening to you and you're the only one who has to go through it. This is not a strange thing. This is a fiery trial in which you have to go through. Come on. As though some strange thing that happened unto you. Come on. But rejoice. Right. This is this is when you go through adverse temptations and trials, you're supposed to rejoice. I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna tell you why here in a minute. Read. And as much as ye are partakers of Yeshua's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed. You may be glad also with exceeding joy. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. If ye be reproached for the name of Yeshua, happy are ye. Come on. For the spirit of glory and of Ahia resteth upon you. That's why you should rejoice. Because the spirit of the Most High God rests upon you. You've been chosen. You have been chosen. Blessed are ye chosen. Read. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in, in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify a higher on this behalf. So the prophets of the past had, uh, or should I say, the prophets of past, uh, 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 the past had times of great rejoice for going through suffering due to, due to doing the Most High's work. This is something to be proud of, not something to put your head, do, bow your head down in shame. You lift your head up when you suffer for the Most High in Christ. It's to the Most High's glory, right? So. We must also see the bigger picture and not complain when he puts us through trials and allows Satan to try to shake us up at times. He's allowing that to show and test his glory. See, my humble servant, you shook him, he didn't crack. He's still righteous. He's still with me like Job. To manifest the most high's glory in his name throughout the four corners of the earth. So this is something that we look forward to. We should look forward to. Because this is the test. This is the trial. To show our worth to our power. Right? 
So, our sufferings in this world for the truth are good, but if you suffer in this world because of sin, then you need to correct yourself immediately and cease from being proud in your own wickedness. And that covers the large spectrum of even just using the Bible as an excuse for your sin. Or using anything to cover up, to make, it, to make your sin sweeter when it's not. Okay? The Most High doesn't glory in that. And he, you won't be used to glorify his name because he has nothing to do with sinners. After all, the Apocrypha says he hates the sin and the sinner. So we're working to try to opposite that. We're working to try to opposite that. All right? Now, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 through 8. 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 through 8. The Most High is giving us a time now to build up our faith, get a good momentum for the times ahead, where we're gonna, we're only going to be able to survive and make it through our faith. So it's, it's time that you sacrifice some things so that you can get that level of faith that will, that will, that will feed you to the other side and have you endure. It's all about endurance. And, and, and today's lesson is geared around that. So I suggest you definitely write down the precepts and study these later on your own time. 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 through 8. Let's check out this. This is the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I not make thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose, and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel of the Most High came again the second time, and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the Mount of Ahiah. So Elijah, after having the wicked of our people, who became prophets of Baal, killed, was being hunted down by the order of the wicked Jezebel and her stooge of a husband, Ahab. Elijah was so distraught at one point that he requested that the Most High would kill him. The Father, however, preserved him and in the end called him up to the heavens in a chariot for the righteous efforts by which he operated on earth. Hmm. You know what? We too must prepare ourselves mentally for those times where you may have to flee your homes for safety simply because you're standing for righteousness in a perverse world. Can you imagine that? Seeing, seeing the news, because it's going to come. Hebrew Israelites at large. You see a guy with this on his head. Call this number. And all we're doing is standing up for Christ. Our Lord and Savior. Following law, statutes, and commandments. 
You see anybody with fringes on? We're looking for them. Can you imagine having the authorities come to your home, kicking you out of your house? Now you're homeless and you gotta move, but but, but you gotta you gotta play it smooth and righteous for the most high. Real endurance is going to kick in then, isn't it? The, your real test of faith is going to kick in right then and there. This is what we have to prepare for. You're down for Christ now. Are you going to be down for Christ then when everything is taken away from you? Think about that for a moment. So we have to prepare mentally for those times where you may have to flee from your homes for safety simply because you're standing for righteousness in a wicked world. Let's go to the book of Jasher, the upright one. All right? Now, for those of you at home on YouTube, this is the book of Jasher. All right? And it actually shows the biblical reference in Joshua chapter 10, verse 13. It's the book of Jasher is mentioned there. Joshua chapter 10, verse 13 is also the book of Jasher is mentioned in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 18. Isn't this written in the book of Jasher? And 2 Timothy, New Testament, chapter 3, verses 8. You can pick this book up on Amazon.com. Look for this picture. All right? We're going to the book of Jasher, chapter 11, 46 through 51. I'm going to have my, my chief officer read that. This is the book of Jasher, chapter 11, verse 46. <clears throat> Did not our fathers in days of old sin in this manner? And the most high power of the universe brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed the whole earth? And how can you continue to do this and serve gods of wood and stone who cannot hear or speak or deliver you from oppression, thereby bringing down the anger of the most high of the universe upon you? So I just want to I just want to point out when it talks about serve other gods, wood and stone in Babylon. They had worshipped the cross in Babylon too. It's not actually the cross. It's actually the letter T for Tammuz, the Babylonian god. They just changed it and used it as a symbol of Christ's death. It's really the Babylonian T for Tammuz. Look it up. It's ancient Babylonian that has been introduced into Christianity. You've been deceived. Read. <clears throat> Verse 48. Now therefore my father refrain from this, and bring not evil upon thy soul and the souls of thy household. And Abram hastened and rang from before his father, and took the hatchet from his father. Um is yours messed up too much? Yeah. Esler, idol. Yeah. Some kind of, some kind of uh, father's uh idol. Just like his father's idol. Kind of. With which Abraham broke it and ran away. Largest idol. Largest idol. Oh, lar and then jest. Okay. Okay, kind of. The water. Verse 50. And Terah, seeing all that Abraham had done, hastened to go from his house. And he went to the king, and he came before Nimrod and stood before him. And he bowed down to the king, and the king said, What doest thou want? And he said, I beseech thee, my lord, to hear me now. Fifty years back a child was born to me, and thus has been thus has he done to my gods, and thus has he spoken. And now therefore, my Lord and King, send for him that he may come before thee, and judge him according to the law, that we may be delivered from this evil. So I want to thank you for that reading. So the elders commentary says, Abraham being a righteous man tried to help his father to walk the path of truth. However, <laughs> like many, he rejected it, just like many of our brothers and sisters out there in the streets. That some, 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 a lot of them rejected. 
Uh, in fact, he went to the government and turned in his own child. Let's, let's read Jasher 12, 1 through 5 real quick. Check this out. I'll show you. Jasher chapter 12, 1 through 5. This is the book of Jasher chapter 12, verse 1. And when the king heard the words of Abram, he ordered him to be put into prison. There you go, read. And Abram was ten days in prison. So, so we, we, might, we, we, we might have to go to prison, some of us. For righteousness sake. This is what this is what this is what this government is, is trying to push us into anyway. With Mark with them put bringing forth martial law in a little bit. Actually it says that in Matthew 24, then they shall deliver you up. Yep, yeah, we're gonna to get to that too. Read. Oh, no, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> verse two. And at the end of those days the king ordered that all the kings, princes, and governors of different provinces and the sages should come before him. You know, a sage is actually like a witch. A person that does magic and witchcraft, a sorcerer, a sage. Read, go ahead. And they sat before him, and Abram was still in the house of confinement. And the king said to the princes and sages, Have ye heard what Abram, the son of Terah, has done to his father? Thus has he done to him, and I ordered him to be brought before me. And thus has he spoken. His heart did not misgive him, neither did he stir in my presence. And behold, now he is confined in the prison. And therefore decide what judgment is due to this man who reviled the king, who spoke and did all the things that you heard. And all they answered the king, saying, The man who reviled the king should be hanged upon a tree. And having done all these things that he said, and having despised our gods, he must therefore be burned to death. For this is the law in this matter. So, as the story goes, Abraham was eventually sentenced to death. That was the penalty. He received the death penalty. For what? For truth. And was in the end still delivered from the fire while the wicked and double-minded were consumed. You see how our power, our, our, our God, the higher, it, 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 it jumps in and, and saves us? Saves our people. This was his prophet. This is what he does to, this is what the Most High does for his prophets. This is what the Most High does for his people who stand up for him. He delivers you. He, he, sends, his, he sends his Savior, Yasha. He sends the Savior, the Yasha. My Savior is Yeshaya. Right? His own brother Haran, who was on the fence on whether or not to follow the truth, was also thrown in the fire and died while Abraham was preserved. Did you know that? Did you read the story? Check that out. Just to show you that you can't teeter totter. You're either hot or you're cold. The most high. He changed not. He said you can't be hot or cold. He said if you're if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. There's your proof. Haran didn't know whether or not if he wanted to be down for the most high or follow the wicked guy. Well, guess what? You just you're ousted out anyway. You got spewed out. For the most high's mouth. Doesn't matter. He suffered the consequences because he wasn't sure. We talked about Friday, we talked about that Friday night about what? Doubt. Right? Let's go to Mark chapter 13. 4 through 13. Mark chapter 13, 4 through 13. We're dealing with the prophets here. We're talking about our forefathers, the prophets. Abraham. We just finished with his example. It looked pretty glim for Abraham, didn't it? I can almost throw an throw a old school Batman and Robin scenario on that. Will our forefather Abraham pull out of the evil, menacing king's clutches? <laughs> Tune in next week, folks. Same Hebrew channel. Same Hebrew time. Right? Remember, Hebrew time is always late, so... Let's go to Mark chapter 13, 4 through 13. Mark chapter 13, 4 through 13. The Most High pulled Abraham out. And, and saved him. 
while everybody else burned. <laughs> Let's get that. Mark chapter 13. This is the book of Mark chapter 13, verse 4. Tell us when these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? That's a question mark. Check out what our Lord and Savior said. Verse 5. And Yeshua answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Now, I want to stop right there just for a moment. Because whenever Christ speaks, the room, the room gets quiet. Like that old commercial, E of Hutton. So right off the rip, the very first thing, the most important thing that Christ could say is right here. Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Then he, then he goes into detail. Read it. Verse 6. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. What does that mean today? Many shall say, I worship Christ. I serve Christ. Many shall say this in the end days. Oh, yeah, I'm with Christ. Jesus. Right? Is that what they say? Jesus even though the letter J wasn't invented until the 17th century. So, he, so he, he wasn't called Jesus when he was walking the earth. But what name is that? Right? Deception. Read. And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. Watch out for these people. Watch out for these people that say they come in Christ's name. But they're deceiving people. How are they deceiving them? Because they're going against what Christ teaches like the law is done away with. Christ never taught that. Don't be deceived. Many shall come in his name saying, I'm with Christ, but shall lie and say the law is done away with. Shall say this and shall say that. And Christ never said that. Christ never taught that. Read. Verse 7. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled. Just like you hear today. <clears throat> Even more so than when I was a child. You, you're hearing about wars and rumors of war, stuff going on. Did you hear about Bosnia? Did you hear about what they're doing in Sri Lanka? Did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Look at what's going on with Trump over there with the with the um the Iranian, the Iraqis or what the Iranians. That's all you hear nowadays. He's telling you and giving you a what? A bearing on the timeline. He's giving you bearings. Read. For such things must needs be. These things, these things have to happen. These such things, they need to happen. They need, these have to happen, but what? But the end shall not be yet. The, the end is not yet. Read. For nations shall rise against nation. Uh huh. Now, now it says nations shall rise against nation. And in the next sentence it says, and kingdom against kingdom. So what's nation against nation? Racial. That's, that's racial. That's racial tendencies, racial tensions. People against the people. Tribe against tribe. And you know that's true because the next sentence is kingdom against kingdom. So you can't say, no, it's just another, another country against another country. No, that's a kingdom. Read. And kingdom against kingdom. Mm -hmm. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. Now that word, earthquakes. Oh, well, we, we see earthquakes all the time. Yeah, but... We're having earthquakes in diverse places. Places that never had earthquakes before. Read. And there shall be famines and troubles. Right. And you know, that, that famine can be a physical one and it can be a spiritual one. Because the people are, they seem like they're just spiritually hungry. You can tell because they're so lawless. Well, Christian pastor teaches that. The law's done away with well, the law is done away with, you've you, you got a whole community of lawless people. No law. Thirsty. Thirsty for biblical law. Uh, yeah, in Amos 8.11, it says a famine of hearing the truth. Yeah, there you go. Um, these are the beginning of sorrow. These are just the beginning of sorrows. And it's sorrowful. It's, 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 it's just a, such a shame to see, to see a people so downtrodden because they want to live a carefree life without law. And they don't even realize that, they're, that, that it's, at to their, it's to their own detriment. 
in their communities and their children and to themselves. You know? Read. Verse 9. But take heed to yourself. But take heed to yourself. For they shall deliver you up to counsel. Like they did Abraham. Right? Read. And in the synagogues ye shall be beaten. Mm -hmm. Come on. And ye shall be brought before rulers and kings mm -hmm. for my sake. So that's when that's when I will put on uh, uh, that that coat of being proud and give all praises because I'm suffering for Christ's sake. Going through going through even just a little bit of what Christ went through. I'm His. I belong to Christ. You. You belong to Christ. And that sets you in line with the promises of Abraham. And Christ loves you. He loves them that love him. If you love me, you keep my commandments, remember? Read. For a testimony against them. There you go. And it's a, and it's, it is a testimony. Because come judgment day, they'll be brought up on charges from the Most High himself. Here I sit. I sent my messenger who had Christ on. And this is what you did to them. This is your judgment when I sent my messenger. Like I sent my only begotten son the first time. This is what you did to him. Now you're doing his people. Because he sprang from the tribe of Judah. He's our kinfolk. Even the Gentiles in Christ belong to him. And he, he said it best, if you do it to them, you do it to the least of mine, it's like you're doing it to me. He's going to have a problem with these other nations. So we'll suffer. That's okay. Christ got our back. Come on, let's read. Verse 10. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. That's how you know it's not time. Because it has to be published to all nations. Everyone everywhere will know of the gathering of Christ church. They will hear the correct gospel according to our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Christ. Once we do that and we spread the gospel to all nations, it's published to all nations, then you'll see the, you'll see the, the tide change. Read verse 11. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Don't even worry about what she's going to say. The Holy Spirit's going to talk for you. Read. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit. Come on. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death. They do that now in the streets. No, I was just out street preaching today out there in, in Cleveland in a, in, a, in a neighborhood that I grew up in that 40 years, 49 years ago, it was beautiful. It looks like something you'd see in New Jack City. Police every five seconds. You know, you know it's bad when you hear that and you see that. How our people kill our own people. Brothers killing brothers. Live next door. One day it's cool, the next day you're robbing your brother. The next day you're shooting him. He live across the street from you. Read. And the father of the son mm -hmm. and children shall rise up against their parents mm -hmm. and shall cause them to be put to death. Right. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Get ready for this, brothers, because Abraham had to go through it. All the prophets had to go through it. We're going to be hated because of who we are in Christ. But who else to be on our side than Christ? You got nothing. We got the best. How, how, how Elder Ricard say? I'm blessed by the best. And his name is Ahia. Because you, you, you can't have a more powerful God. He is the God of all gods. <laughs> so be not worried. All right, we're going to have to go through some things to show and prove we are faithful. Read. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And see, and that debunks that whole rapture crap. The true people, well, and even the Gentiles in Christ, I have to go through this. 
you're, you're going to have to go through Mark chapter 13. There's no rapture. Because if there is, then that makes this chapter, this whole verse void. Who are these people that must go through this in the last days? Who are they to the Most High? And why are you talking about some rapture that's not even in the Bible? The commentary says, Yeshia warned in the last days, those that stood for truth would be betrayed by their own families. Nothing in here says anything about rapture. That's just a little trick deception. Deception. Be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, but shall deceive many with the rapture doctrine. This is true doctrine recovering right now. Those that are in Christ must go through this. There's no rapture of the church. That's false doctrine. Now you need to look at your pastor or your teacher and go, you are what Matthew on Mark chapter 13 warned me against. Where'd you get this rapture crap? Be not deceived, Christ said. You being deceived? Huh? Ask yourself that. In a world where people have become cold to each other, how much more shall these things come to pass that were prophesied in the past times? Now, if Yeshaya had to go through it, then so do we. Makes sense, doesn't it? He had to do it. It, 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 it makes perfect sense that Christ's followers must go through it. They hated Christ. We follow Christ. They're going to hate us. It's a, it's a no-brainer. There's no rapture doctrine. That's what they came up with in Christian Sunday church to calm people down so they would just sit in church and just wait for martial law to come in. No, don't worry about it. Christ is going to rapture us. Don't worry about the tanks going down your street. Nothing to see here. Just go ahead and accept the little mark of the beast in your forearm or in your, in your hand. Sit there. Make sure you put the money in the tithing basket. Any minute now, we're going to disappear and we'll be in heaven. <laughs> Are you crazy? And can I make a quick comment? Yeah, go ahead. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say Christ going to come back three times. No. Because in the rapture deception, it says that Christ going to come, pull people out, leave seven years after the tribulation, then come back again. It's called setting you up for the fall. <laughs> right? Christian pastors that are that, that are with this wicked society set, setting you up so that the government can bring martial law in and knock you down. They setting them up, they come knock them down. Are you catching it? Are you smelling what Christ is cooking? Let's go to Revelations 2, 8 through 11. Revelations chapter 2, 8 through 11. Revelations chapter 2, 8 through 11. Go on, let's read that. Now, this is the book of Revelations chapter 2, verse 8. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, mm -hmm. These things save the first and the last, which was dead and is now alive. Verse 9, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Who is that? Who, who, what people is that? That's a rhetorical question. <laughs> There's only one people on the earth that say they are Jews and are not, and the key is in their name, Jewish. Eh, I'm kind of Jewish. I'm a Jewish. I'm, I'm Jewish. I'm not Jew. I'm not really a real Jew. I I'm something like that. I'm Jewish. And when you look that word up in the biblical dictionary, it's, it says it. One that resembles a Jew. Okay, well, if you resemble a Jew, well, who are the real Jews? 
You're not, you're not even, you're not even the real people. You're Jewish. Which means you, you went to the land, you learned a couple of things, but you want some different mess. So that makes you Jewish. No, that makes you a fake imposter. It's what you are. Because if you're Jewish, you would want to get back under the Jews of the Bible and continue your learning. But you were not of our Father, the Most High. Read the rest of it. They say they are Jews and are not, but what? But are the synagogue of Satan. That's why you won't perpetuate the real Jews. Because your father is the, is the devil. You are the synagogue. The highest point for Satan. You're like your father. And your father's business, ye shall do. That's why you're Jew-ish. You're not the people. You never were the people. Look at the earth today. It's a direct reflection that you're not the people. Wars, famine, anguish. Heck, your, your main area of expertise is Hollywood. Your commerce is ran through you, the Jewish. The banking systems belong to you. The corruption belongs to you. Everything that this world is today is through the Jewish synagogue, the high point of Satan. I know thy works in tribulations and poverty, talking to the real Jews, because the, the Jewish people, they don't have any works. They didn't go through any tribulations. And they definitely didn't have any poverty like we did. But thou art still rich, you real Jews. I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews. And this is Christ talking. He already knew. He's calling them out. Which say they are Jews and are not. But are the synagogue of Satan. Read verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Don't fear them. Don't fear the Jewish people. Don't fear what they're going to try to do to us through martial law, imprisonment, and all that stuff. Don't fear none of that. Read. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, mm -hmm. that ye may be tried. And you know what? If I go there, I'm going to preach the gospel in prison. Come on. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. If I got to do it, then I got to do it. My Lord and Savior did it. He did it for me. I'll do it for him. Read. And I will give thee a crown of life. There you go. No harm, no foul. <laughs> See that? See what you get? And all you got to do is just stay faithful and even unto death. You might not even have to go that route. It may be that the Most High may just hide you in the day of trouble. Stay focused. Read. Verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear. All right. Listen. What the Spirit saith unto the churches, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. See, that's the most important thing. You overcome this trial on earth while you're still alive, you won't be hurt of the second death. That's the most important thing right there. The second death is what? That's curtains. That's it. The second death is finito. Game over. That's that straight lake of fire right there. Same thing as Satan's going to go in. That means you're just totally erased out of existence. You get, you get, you get nothing. You, no game over. You don't go back to go. That's it. So we, sh we need to be looking to make it through this and overcome. Overcome your fear, overcome your, 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 your faults and your sins. And overcome to make it to the other side. Alright? Now, just as Abraham and others like him were unwavering in truth, 
So we must be even if we are thrown into prison or threatened with death. We belong to the most high. You feel me? We, we belong to him. There's nothing he can't do. There's nothing he can't do. We belong to the most high, Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya, and his son, Yeshaya. And we are to be used to do his will until death and beyond. That's our purpose in life. That's the purpose. Not for our own selfish pleasures, but to do the most high's will forever and beyond. If it be the most high's will. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, 1 through 4. Hebrews 11, 1 through 4. I love this scripture. This scripture means so much to me. And it should mean something to you. Hebrews 11, 1 through 4. Read that, Gabar. Uh, this is the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. We obtain a good report because of our faith, the substance of things hoped for. I hope and I pray for my people, for the Gentiles in Christ, that we make it to the other side. And I work and I, and I, I, I work for the people to try to get them to come back to righteousness. And I try to stand firm for Christ to stomp out wickedness. So through that, the elders obtain a good report through the, to the heavenly tabernacle. Where's that in the Christian churches today in Sunday worship? Where's that? And I'm not saying it's totally all their fault because they've been led astray too. It was through slavery that they were taught to deceive their own people. It was a punishment handed down by the Most High. He said that we would be discontinued from our heritage. He said that he would send us away into Egypt again. That word Egypt is the house of bondage by ships. I will send you and your king that's over you to a faraway land where you and your fathers know not and there you will be forced to worship wood and stone. So it's not exactly all their fault. This is a biblical curse being handed down to the children of Israel for disobedience. He told us in Deuteronomy 28 that if you don't listen and hearken to the Most High, our power, then all these curses shall befall you. That's how we know we're the people. We're under a curse. And I like how Kanye said it. It's like the people, we've been sitting here trying to wake people up. It's like, you know, you steal... You're still acting foolish, our people. They're still acting like, like, like they're heathens. It's like, you know what? Slavery must be a choice. Because they choose to be ignorant. They choose to kill themselves. They choose to drug themselves up and liquor themselves up and fornicate and do all the wickedness. You don't have to do that. Then if, if, if you know that you don't have to do that, then it must be a choice. Slavery must be a choice. Mentally enslaved. It must be a choice. Or else you would change. I've changed. All these people in this church have changed. There's churches all over the world. They're changing. People, people are changing. It's a choice. You can choose righteousness. Or you can choose wickedness. If that sort of thing appeals to you, then you're going to choose it. It's a choice. Wickedness is slavery. Righteousness is freedom. And that's what Kanye was trying to tell you. But now y'all want to get, ride his back, make him look bad. You really need to pray for Kanye. Because he's going through it right now. Read. <clears throat> Verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of the Most High. We understand that through faith. Come on. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The invisible and the Most High created things from the invisible 
to the visible. Never thought that far, have you? It's true. In the beginning was the Word. That was in the invisible realm. He manifested things into the spirit, uh, into the physical. That's the power he has. Read. Verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto Ahiah a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. He was righteous. Read. Ahiah testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. So Abel himself was met with death after simply doing things in righteousness. This is what you get on a wicked earth. This is what you get on a wicked planet. So it's no marvel that the followers of Christ must suffer something. This started long ago, and the world is more evil than before, yet the rules are the same. The rules are still the same. We must stand in strength and full authority without flinching in the eyes of adversity for the Father in heaven. Cain, being unrighteous, became jealous because Abel became a reminder to him of the things he was rebellious in. Cain knew that he had to present a more substance, a more, uh, uh, a more better sacrifice than he did other than fruits and vegetables. But he, what, in his flesh, he, what, desired to keep what he should have offered to the Most High. Spirit of what? Selfishness. Thinking he was better. Well, why do I have to offer my firstlings of my lambs? I'll just give him some lettuce. Then got mad because Abel was like, well, I'm going to give the best of the best I got to the Most High. Goody two shoes. I can't wait. I'm going to hit you with this rock. <laughs> right? It's right there. Righteous, the righteous have suffered since the beginning almost of time. Right? We must stand in the strength of full authority without flinching, like I said, right? This kind of murderous thinking is still present today. Jealousy and envy is still rampant. We have to make sure we watch out for it, especially in our church, because it's a killer. It's a killer. It can kill. It can cause one to go too far and commit one of the most ultimate of sins. If you're not careful, we fight not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Let's go to the wisdom of Solomon real quick. Wisdom of Solomon 2, 11 through 22. That's going to be in your apocrypha. I don't have my red apocrypha. So hold that up. No, we already got one right here. So this would be the apocrypha. It was the 14 books of the Bible that was taken out by Constantine in his Council of Nicaea back in 70 AD. I'm sorry, 325. 320, 325. Right? AD. I wonder who gave them that authority. I never heard Christ say, hey, you council, hey, take these books out. What authority did you have to do that? Oh, they were they ruled over us, so they had our books and took our books. Those that they caught, they murdered, and the rest they sent off into slavery. That gave them the authority. Right? It's the 14 books of the Bible you're missing at home, people on YouTube. We're going into the wisdom of Solomon. 2, 11 through 22. Read. <clears throat> This is the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 11. Let our strength be the law of justice. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Just that one verse right there is one of the reasons why they took it out. Well, we got to push and promote that the law was done away with. We got to get rid of this book because it's saying our strength be the law of justice. In the Bible. Okay, get rid of it. What else you got? You know what, just take all 14 of them books and just chuck it. 
Tell them it's non-canonized, canonized. Make up a word. Oh, we can use canon. Okay. That sounds good. They're a lost people. They don't know. In 10 years, we're going to change their name from Afro, uh, Afro-Americans to African-Americans. They don't care. They'll just take any name. Black, Afro-American, whatever. Curses of Deuteronomy, right? Read, our, our, let our strength be the law of justice. Come on. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Right, come on. Therefore let us lie and wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn, and he is clean contrary to our doings. So he's going to set up and just wait for the righteous to show so they can kill us, so that they can take advantage of us. Come on. <clears throat> he upbraideth us with our offending the law. Mm -hmm. An objective to our infamy, the transgression of our education. Now you understand why now they push that there's no law. The law was done away with. They hate the law because now they have to what? Be accountable. They don't want to be accountable. And they've taught the children of Israel this. Through the curse. Right? Come on. Actually, can I make a quick comment? Yeah. Because this is actually the other nation speaking. So they say they should yeah, yeah. in their laws. So right. They're going to create laws right. to oppress the poor righteous. So, so that they're going to sit up and take that wise counsel, that crafty counsel. And, and it also says that um, we're going to be showing them that the infamy and their transgression through their education and teaching us everything against the most high. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I was getting ready to get to it, but thank you for helping me out because I'm also a little parched. Come on. <laughs> Verse uh, 13. He professes to have the knowledge of the Most High, and he calleth himself the child of the Lord. Yep, that's what we call ourselves. Come on. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us to even behold. Stop right there. You see how the other nations, the heathens, even admit Jacob was made to reprove our thoughts. That's what he was made for. We were made to reprove the wicked. Come on. He is grievous unto us to even behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. That's true. Come on. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. I love how he says that we are esteemed of him as counterfeits, fake Jews, Jewish, counterfeits. You know, y'all not the people. Y'all never was the people. They were telling them that back then. Why do you think the Apostle Paul was going hard in on talking about don't boast against the natural branches? Y'all not the people. You can't boast against the natural branches. And when you do boast, you're not boasting about yourself. You're boasting about us. When we were at our highest, when we were when we were with the Most High, they count. They were they're counterfeit. Come on, he professeth the end of the just to be blessed, and maketh his boast that a higher is his father. Let us see if his words be true, and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man be the son of the Most High, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture. Wow. That they may know his meekness and prove his patience. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. For by his own saying, he shall be respected. Now, stop right there. I'm going to show you something. You can Google this later when you get home. The Romans, when they would execute someone, they had different ways of death. They had a soldier's death. They had a civilian's death. But one of the most shameful deaths you could get was crucifixion. They gave it to child molesters and rapists. The lowest of the low, the creme de, the creme, de la creme of the worst criminals ever was for the crucifix. The same thing they put Christ on. And people have the nerve to wear a cross around their neck. It's a cross of shame. And the other nations have twisted it so that it would be a term of endearment. And it's a slap in our Lord and Savior's face. Read. Verse 21. 
such things they did imagine mm -hmm. and were deceived. Yep. For their own wickedness has blinded them. Yep, their own wickedness blinded them. In their own wickedness, they devised this torture device that they would later use on our Lord and Savior that everybody's wearing around their necks, up in churches and everything, mocking the power of he who is now in full power and has risen. What about that likeness? What about that image? Not some feeble Lord and Savior straw sprawled up on some cross at his lowest point. What about his what about when he was risen from the dead point? Read. Verse 22. As for the mysteries of Ahia, they knew them not. And that's why they do these things. That's why they perpetuate these things. They don't know the most high in Christ. Read. Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness, nor discern a reward for blameless souls. So the wicked in their heart pray for the downfall of the righteous to their Lord and Savior, Satan. Because only a satanic religion would show Christ our Lord and Savior as a weakling on a cross dying. I hope it's sinking in. I hope the deception is, the shroud of deception is slowly removing from you. And seeing that you are being deceived in the, last, in the later days, like Christ said in Matthew, see to it that you be not deceived. So if you look to see a righteous brother or sister fall because of your own shortcomings, you are no different than the Satanists that have set up the whole government under Satan to trap the righteous. Because that's what it is. That's exactly what this government, this construct is. This principality that they have created in America. So if that's you, then your penalty also will be hellfire. Change. Repent. Become baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, for the remission of your sins. Let's go to John chapter 17, 5 through 11. And what I'm doing, and what, and what, and what the elders are doing is preparing Christ's people for the final and last showdown. Because what we're, what we're reading will have to come to pass, but the end isn't yet. So the more closer you are to Christ, through faith, the more of a chance you have to be pulled through to the other side. And the lack of faith you have will be shown by their fruits. You can recognize them. I hope I'm getting through to everybody. All right. John 17, 5 through 11, read. Uh, this is the book of John, chapter 17, verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out of, from thee. Who, who, who's Christ talking to here? This, this is rhetorical. I'm, I'm doing this, 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 this. I'm stopping here specifically for people at home that think, Christ is the ultimate God, and he's not. He's part of the Allahayim in the Hebrew, which means a part of the Godhead. But who is he speaking to here? The Father. He's not speaking to himself. So all of you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one. No, that doesn't mean that they're one person. It means they agree as one. The three agree as one. Not one person. He's talking to himself in heaven while he's on earth. That's preposterous. <laughs> That's preposterous. 
But that's the trinity for you, false doctrine. Christ is talking to himself in the flesh, and then in the spirit, he's talking to himself in the spirit. What's wrong with you? What, what, what you smoking on? <laughs> Who's Christ talking to here? He's talking to the Father. Read. And have known surely that I came out from thee. He came out from himself. From right? thee. Yeah, he came out from his Father. He's the only begotten son. There's scriptures in the Bible that proves it. Wake up. Come on. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. He gave himself me. He, he, he gave himself these people to himself. He here's the gift from me to me. You know what? Reading is fundamental, darn it. Just pick up the book and read it. And stop making up stuff. Read. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine. And thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Oh, who's that? Is that him? Is that Christ talking to himself? Who's he referring to? Read. Holy Father, keep thou thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we are. So that we all can be one, as Christ and his Father is one. Agree is one. They're on the same page. His Father's plan is Christ's plan. That kind of one. I digress, though. The Elder's Commentary says, Christ manifested the Father's name to those who were worthy of it, and others rejected it. He understood his death was near, but also understood that uh, so those that would carry on the truth would also be tried. So he prayed for us in this scripture right here. He prayed for us. He's asked, he's a approaching the throne to, to the Father, praying for us today, because we're out there street preaching. We're out there bringing the true doctrine of Christ to the forefront, and later on, we're going we're, we're going, to we're going be tried for it. They're going to come down on us for it. So, be of good cheer and have faith. All right? He prayed for them and not for the world, because the worldly will follow Satan in the end, Right? And always have. All right? That's why he said, I'm no part of this world. His, uh, his, his, his adversity he was met with was, um, was met with for the sin of others laid the groundwork or the model of what it means to truly be a servant of the Most High. He laid the groundwork. So now that the groundwork is laid, all we have to do is just follow the blueprint word for word and not make it up. The Bible says, believe on me as the scriptures say, not as you make them up. Well, I think this means that. No, it says you do this. Just do it. Just do it. Don't sit there and analyze it and reanalyze it. Just do it. When I tell my child, take out the garbage, you know, well, I think what he meant was spiritually take out the garbage, which means that he, he, he wants me to think about the garbage in spirit, and, 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 and that's almost like me taking it out, even though it's still there. No, I mean, get up off your keister, go over to the kitchen, and take out the garbage. <coughs> Same way the Bible works. Well, my, you know my heart. Well, you know, I, I, you know, well, you know my heart, Dad. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get up, I'm gonna bust you. I'm gonna bust you in your heart. I'm gonna break your heart. You're gonna cry. I'm gonna put something on your butt to make you cry. Same thing with the Bible. Just do what the Father says. Don't sit up there and make up stuff. Believe on Him, as the Scriptures say. Right? Is there more on that? Get Revelation, okay, yeah. Come. Revelations 1, 7 through 9. We're just about finished. Revelation.
Revelation 1, 7 through 9. You're making good time, too. Revelation 1, 7 through 9. Read that, brother. Yes, sir. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, am I. Verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. Read. The beginning and the end, saith the Most High, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Yeshua Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of Ahiah, and for the testimony of Yeshua Christ. So John, who was, so I say John, who like many prophets of the Most High, went through great tribulations. All right, he was actually exiled to the island of Patmos. At the end of his persecutions, he was exiled to an island called Patmos in order to receive great revelation for the future. This book of Revelations is still one of the most popular books within the Bible until this day, and is showing to be one of the one of to be uh, be of the Most High through its constant prophetic accuracy. You just have to Second Timothy two fifteen. You got to study to show thyself approved, right? Sometimes the things the Most High puts us through initially may seem like a rough deal but the truth is he has a greater purpose to reveal in its time to those who he allows to go through these tribulations so as you go through these tribulations you will gain great knowledge you will gain those fruits of the spirit that maybe you're lacking in but you have to start and stand for something or you'll fall for anything. That seems like that's the precedence nowadays. If you're not, if you're not going to stand for Christ, then you're going to fall for this world. You'll fall for anything. What is it, that new thing, that, the Chrislam? Can we come for real? A, a mixture between Christianity and Islam, Chrislam? I don't even want to know how that works. It sounds stupid. <laughs> I, be, I still trip on the Buddhist. Calling on Buddha. Just another fallen angel. They don't know nothing about the most high God of Israel, but they will. You will. So we are to get together and come together like this to prepare because we have some trials and tribulations we must go through so that the Most High's name and Christ's name can be manifest throughout the four corners of the earth. All right? Like it says, seems like our ancestors went through some rough deals, but the truth is, is that he has a greater purpose to reveal in his time to those who he allows to go through these tribulations. So it's almost like a rite of passage. You go, you go, you're, you, you're here and you're going to stick through it through the thick and thin, you're allowed to go through, through these tribulations so that you can receive the reward on the other side. Let's go to Hebrews 12, 1 through 7. I think we got two more. One more scripture after this. Hebrews 12, 1 through 7. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Yes, come on. Verse 2. Looking unto Yeshia, the author and finisher of our faith. Right who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, mm -hmm. despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Ahia. What about that image? 
What about the image in your mind of Christ our Lord and Savior sitting down at the right hand of the throne of God himself? Are you wearing this old little decrepit cross? That's not Christ. Christ is sitting at the right hand of his Father in heaven on, on a throne. That's the true image of Christ. You've just been, you've been led astray. You, don't, you, you, you know not what you do. Worshipping wood and stone. Paganism. That's what it's called. Read verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners mm -hmm. against himself. Mm -hmm. Lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. That's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to endure contradiction of sinners. They're sinners. And they have the nerve to point the finger as if they're good and we're bad. Woe to them that call good evil and evil good. Read. Verse 4. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood. You haven't done this yet, brothers and sisters. You're still learning how to resist the, just the flesh. You still, we're still learning how to just ref, to resist the flesh. Maybe you have to resist this until blood. We got a lot of ground to cover. We got to get, we got to get to it. We got to start training. We got to start building our faith through each other. We shouldn't even be looking to try to mingle with the rest of the world right now. We need to be mingling and building our faith amongst each other, even more so as the day draws near. Read. Striving against sin. Mm -hmm. Striving against sin. Verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Most High. And that's what a lot of people do. They despise the chastening of the Most High. They don't want to go through the councils. They want to be able to do what they want to do, but not pay the cost to be the boss. So they'll remove themselves. They'll sit to the side. They'll make up excuses. They'll even try to get you to follow them. Somebody has to stand up for, for Christ. But see, a, a, but see a, a person that doesn't know will stand up for their brother and sister in wickedness, and Christ is going, what about me? What about me? Where were you when I needed you to check your brother or your sister in wickedness? Where were you? You were agreeing with it. You were, oh, it's okay. The, the deacon is, you know, he's a bad man. I, I kind of felt that way myself. No. No, you haven't, you're not resisting, all right? You're doing the opposite, all right? You haven't resisted into blood yet, right? Read. <clears throat> Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Mm -hmm. Verse 6, for whom the most high loveth, he chasteneth. There you go. That's how you know you're loved. The opposite, you're not loved. The Most High isn't chastening you. You're not loved. If you're running from the... Yeah, I remember when I was little, I used to run from the belt. No, 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 I'm going to whoop your butt today, boy. My mama used to chase me around the coffee table. I used to, I used to run from a butt whooping, boy. You're going to get it. You better stop running because you don't stop running. I'm just going to... It's going to hurt harder. You, know, you almost stop for a second. No, you almost had me. <laughs> Thinking about it, but it's true. She catch you. It's almost like it's worse. But see, people today are coming to the church. They'll run from it. They'll run from chasing, being chastened. Not knowing that the Most High loves you, that's why he chasteneth you. But you'll run. See, that's that whole Willie Lynch syndrome all over again. Our people have been designed and bred by, 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 our, by, by captivity to run. If you run from the South, run. You run when you hear police sirens. Run. You're always running. <laughs> they make up songs, 100 miles and running. When are we going to stop running, brothers? When are we going to stop running, sisters? 
When are you just going to stand up and be like, you know what? I messed up. I got some chastening coming. Give it to me. Bring it. I need it. And that's just like this. Everybody wants change. Don't nobody want to change. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, brother. I'm glad, I'm glad you put it that way. Everybody wants change. Don't nobody want to change. Man, that's, 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 that's deep right there. Not really, but it's deep. Deep enough. I just like how it sounds. I just like how it sounds. So go ahead, let's finish reading this up. We're just about done. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. That's right. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. That's right. He gets on you. He scourges you. He loves you. Read. If he endure chastening, a higher dealeth with you as with sons. Yeah, he, you're, you're, you're his father. I mean, uh, he, he's your father. That means that, guess what? You're his son. You're his daughter. You're it. You're, you're in the family. What son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Hmm. A bastard. You don't have a heavenly father. I would much rather have a heavenly father and maybe endure death. I know my father has me. He can bring me back. Better off than I was when I was when I when I when I when I was here. Maybe. It's up to the most high. I humble myself before him. And our Lord and Savior. Join me. So Paul was letting the church know that they didn't know yet what it meant to truly put your life on the line to fight against the forces of evil. And that's something we're going to really learn in the near future. What it's like to really put your life on the line for Christ. Like how he did it. There is a real battle for the souls of men going on. Yeshia, as well as Paul, understood that that battle, I'm saying, and he was speaking about another level of faith that we will all have to obtain if we hope to truly endure against the trials of the devil. Now, the elders say, stand firm. Remembering the trials of the past, knowing those that stood for righteousness were rewarded in the end for a job well done. Now we got one last scripture here, 1 Corinthians 9, 20 and 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 20 through 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 20 through 27. We're right on, we're right on schedule here. Last one. I love it when a plan comes together. Let's read that. Go ahead. <clears throat> this is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 20. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, to them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without law to a higher, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. So there was a time back in ancient Israel where people, like today, thought that the law was done away with. So here, Paul is going, you know, to the Jews, to the, to the ones that followed the law, I became as one that followed the law. To the ones that were without law, I still followed the law, but I, but I sympathized with them. So that they can come to the law. Read. Verse 22. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And that's how we have to be. We have to be all things to all men and all women. So that we can save some. We got to save some. There's some people out there that are willing to follow the most high. God of Israel, follow these laws, statutes, commands. It don't have to be everybody, but we got to save some, and we got and, and we got help here at the church to help save some. Don't care what and I don't care what color you are. I want to save some Hebrews. I want to save some Gentiles too. I want to save some white folks, some Chinese folks, 
I don't care where you're from. If you want to listen to us, we're over here, 4710 State Road, Cleveland, Ohio, 4413, what is it? 409. 4409. <laughs> we'll put the address and the phone number in the video. <laughs> All right, read. Verse 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake. For the gospel's sake. That I might be partaker thereof with you. Right. Know ye not that they which run a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Mm -hmm. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we? But we an incorruptible. Come on. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So through weakness and strength, keep running the race as our forefathers and foremothers once did. Run with purpose. Run with surety. And we talked about the things uh, that, that let you know that you may be under spiritual attack or under a test is when you are what? Uncertain. When you have doubt in your walk, you have to be sure. Be sure. Like Morpheus said in, in the in the um the matrix. There's that you're gonna learn once in a, eventually you're gonna learn me of the difference between knowing the path and walking the path. And that goes the same for us today. There's a difference between knowing it and walking it. And that makes the difference. Don't think you are. Know you are. Right? So, run with purpose, run with surety, and cross that finish line even if you have to crawl there. Shalom. Shalom. Give it up for the next time. All praises to the most high of all creation.